Hi, I'm Chad with Move4 Guitar. This lesson is from our series, Music Theory for Guitar. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the musical alphabet and the chromatic scale. First off, download our free e-guide, Music Theory for Guitar. It contains everything that I'm talking about in this lesson, all the charts and diagrams, as well as much more, so it'll be really useful to you. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to just go download that. But I am working on it right now as I'm filming this lesson, so it may not be available as you're watching this lesson. And if it's not available yet, it'll say coming soon. And if you'd like to get notified when it is available, you can sign up for our mailing list and we'll send you a notification for when it is available and let you download it. And also if you're signed up for our mailing list, you'll receive all updated versions as well. But don't worry, you don't need the e-guide to follow along with this lesson because all the charts and diagrams will be on the screen. And also we add at least one new lesson every day, so be sure to subscribe. So this is part six in our series, Music Theory for Guitar. So if you'd like to go back and watch from the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So everything we've talked about up to this point has been based on intervals. We haven't been talking about specific note names. In this lesson, we're going to switch gears a little bit and actually talk about note names. And then in upcoming lessons, I'm going to tie them both together. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about the musical alphabet, which is all the notes in music. So the musical alphabet goes from A to G. Just like the regular alphabet, it's in the same order. It's just shorter than the regular alphabet because after G you would start back over at A. So here's the musical alphabet on one string of the guitar. And I'm sure you notice that between A and B, C and D, D and E, and F and G, that there's notes missing. And that's because even though the musical alphabet goes from A to G, there's sharps and flats in between most of the notes. So here's what the musical alphabet actually looks like. In between A and B you have an A sharp or a B flat. Between C and D you have a C sharp or D flat. D and E a D sharp or E flat. F and G an F sharp or G flat. And then G and then it would go back to A. Between that you have G sharp and A flat. So it's still the musical alphabet from A to G but with those sharps and flats in between. And you'll notice that each one says the sharp and a flat. So for example the first one says A sharp and B flat. That's because if you raise A half a step you would get an A sharp, but if you lowered B half a step, you get a B flat. Sharp is raising, flat is lowering. And those two notes are called inharmonic equivalents, which mean that they're the exact same note with a different name. And what you call them depends on the musical situation, which we'll talk about in upcoming lessons. Then you'll also notice between B and C and E and F that there is no sharp or flat. And that's because between B and C, and E and F on any instrument is half a step. So if you're looking at a piano, any place you see two white keys together, those are either a B and a C or an E and an F. All the other keys would have a black key in between, which would be the sharps and flats. So here's the musical alphabet with the sharps and flats filled in on the guitar again. And you'll notice that be where B and C are, those are still a half step, E and F is still a half step. So there's no sharp and flat in between those. So here again, it should be easier to visualize that if you were to raise your A half a step, you'd get an A sharp. But if you lowered your B half a step, you'd get a B flat. Because like I said, a sharp raises the pitch half a step, a flat lowers the pitch half a step. And that's why it says either a sharp and flat in between each of those. And like I said, what you actually call it, because you wouldn't call it both of those at the same time, you would what you would actually call it would depend on the musical situation. So these are all the notes in music. This would be every note name on your guitar fretboard. There's no other note names in music. It's just that there could be other pitches with these same names which as you remember are caused by octaves. So here is every note on your guitar fretboard filled in. You'll see that it's just the same notes repeating over and over again. And this would also be the chromatic scale on the guitar. The chromatic scale is every single note. So you could start with any one of these notes. If I started with E right here with the open string and I went up to E right here, that would be an E chromatic scale from E to E. So an E chromatic scale would be all of these notes. 
and technically it would be all the notes on your fretboard. So that's why I also mentioned that I'm talking about the chromatic scale because the chromatic scale is, ev is a scale based on half steps. So starting with any note, you take that note and bring it up to the note of the same name, so an octave higher, by half steps. And then if you were to do that all over your guitar, it would just fill in every single note of your guitar. So if you ever hear chromatic scale or chromatic notes, that's what it's talking about. Chromatic notes are side by side. They're half steps apart. So this is a huge step in understanding music theory because in the next lesson, we're going to dive into the major scale. And you need to understand the musical alphabet to dive into the major scale. And the major scale is one of the most important fundamentals to understand in music because in Western music, everything is based off of it. And again, just like the other lessons, you don't have to memorize all this information. Don't think you even have to come close to looking at this fretboard and memorizing the order of the notes yet. We're not to that point yet. I just needed to give you the concept of the musical alphabet and how it lies on the guitar. Because in the next lesson, like I said, we're going to actually dive into the major scale and talk about how to take these notes and turn them into the major scale. So again, download the e-guide to use as a reference. You'll come back to this often. And you can move on to the next lesson now. And be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.